Well, I want them to know a couple of things. Uh, one, as I said when, at the outset, uh, Navy leadership is, is laser focused on this, on not just making these very tough decisions, uh, but on uh, working with members of Congress to see what we can do to avoid sequestration and try to uh, eliminate this uncertainty. Uh, number two, um, as I said before, pay and benefits, uh, their health care, that's all going to be preserved. Uh, the CNO and the Secretary have both made that very clear that, uh, uh, that they're going to fully support our people and making sure that they don't have to give up any of the benefits they've earned. And then so lastly, number three, uh, and this is a key point to also make, is that we're going to preserve that forward deployed readiness. I mean, we have a, a mission to do for the country, uh, for our allies and partners. Uh, and Navy leadership understands that. And so forward deployed readiness is not going to suffer, at least not in the near term. Now, again, as I said, there's a ripple effect on some, with some of these maintenance issues and, and training and operations should sequester happen. Uh, I think it will be increasingly hard for us not to affect forward deployed readiness. But for right now, we're going we're gonna to work with might and main to preserve that forward deployed readiness uh, for those sailors that are out there at the pointy end right now.